salt marsh today. We're going to be reading the book called A Day in the Salt Marsh by Kevin Kurtz with illustrations by Consi Powell. And as you can see, the salt marsh is obviously an area with lots of very tall grass. You don't see trees out here, no woody trunks, but lots of grass. And we're going to explore once we get done reading our story. The sun's coming up in the salt marsh, and the birds respond with song. If you decide to stay a while, you'll see changes all day long. It's 8 o'clock in the salt marsh. The tide is really low. The fiddler crabs upon the mud are putting on a show. They wave their claws to the left, then wave them to the right. And if a rival gets too close, the crabs will start to fight. It's nine o'clock in the salt marsh. The tide is coming back. And on the muddy bank, you'll hear a quiet crack. A terrapin is eating while resting on the ground. It bites into a snail shell and makes a popping sound. It's 10 o'clock in the salt marsh. The tide's now in the grass. The tiny periwinkle snails wait for the tide to pass. Clinging to the blades of grass, they climb without a sound, staying above the rising water to avoid being drowned. I have some periwinkles right here at my knees. It's 11 o'clock in the salt marsh. The tide is getting high. Over in the tidal creek, a blue crab skitters by. The blue crab isn't picky and will eat most any dish. It even eats sea cucumber or a stinky piece of fish. It's 12 o'clock in the salt marsh. The tide is rising fast. A gray fin breaks the water as a dolphin swims right past. Look, it's moving quickly, just like it's in a race. The small fish swim before it as the dolphin gives them chase. It's one o'clock in the salt marsh. The tide is very high. The grass is underwater and yet it doesn't die. The cord grass drinks salt water as the wind blows it about. The leaves hold the water in, but spit the salt back out. It's two o'clock in the salt marsh, and the fish, small and tiny, swimming all around the grass with scales so small and shiny. The marsh is like a nursery where little fish can hide. They eat the food that's brought their way with each new rising tide. It's three o'clock in the salt marsh, and on and off all day, running, splashing, swimming, the river otters play. Two pups begin to wrestle, a game of one-on-one. -on -one. At first, their mother watches, then joins them in the fun. It's four o'clock in the salt marsh, and over by the tidal creek stands a gray and stately bird with a long, pointy beak. The great blue heron waits quietly, but when it sees its prey, its beak hits the water and the fish can't get away. There's a great blue heron feeding over there over my shoulder. It's five o'clock in the salt marsh and the water's going down. Over on the muddy bank, a horseshoe crabs aground. It doesn't seem to move at all, yet if you look and smell, it's not the live horseshoe crab, but just the molted shell. It's six o'clock in the salt marsh. The oysters no longer hide. They're out in the sunlight, uncovered by the tide. Oysters hold up the banks so the grass can grow. Grass supports the food web in the daily salt marsh show. The sun's going down in the salt marsh. The day is almost through. But if you're back tomorrow, you'll see other changes too. And that is a day in the salt marsh, according to this book. So let's go see what our morning in the salt marsh looks like here in Apollo Beach. 
this is a serif. A serif is a type of marine snail that is a super grazer and is really good at scraping the algae and diatoms off the blades of grass and at low tide even off the mud. This is a really great example of how the periwinkles stay high on the blades of grass to keep out of the water so they don't drown. So it's September right now. It's not really osprey nesting season, but we do find evidence that osprey are still here. They're the birds that live in the nest that you see behind me, and I have this feather that they leave behind as they fly over. Every day we see osprey diving into this salt marsh. They love to eat fish. That's their primary source of food, and they've found a really good place to make a home. This is a very small horseshoe crab molt that we found out here in the salt marsh. So it's not the actual animal, but when as a horseshoe crab grows, it will crack open the front part of its shell on that rounded part, kind of to the left. And it will crawl out the front and then continue to grow in size. So that's why it said in the book, if you smell, it might be a molt because when the shell is left behind, it's kind of smelly at first. But they're very thin and papery once it's dry. I even see male fiddler crabs waving their large claws over on the bank, trying to attract a female. Fiddler crabs actually get their name from that waving motion because the large claw of the male looks like an actual musician playing a fiddle or a violin. So now these fiddler crabs are some of our most common and popular marsh inhabitants. Here's a picture of a male fiddler crab up close. You can see that obvious large claw and then the small claw is the one that they use to feed. They walk sideways across the marsh surface and they actually live in the burrows in the mud. The burrows are going to be those small openings that you see all over the marsh surface. Oh. A big snook just swam through the pipe and spooked those fish. We saw it. There's a blue crab over behind that clump of oysters. That's probably what was spooking those small fish earlier. Blue crabs are live in the water and they're a swimming crab. Their back legs are sort of modified like little paddles. So they stay in the water and live in the water, feed in the water. Check this out. Look at that line going through the grass. That's actually a wildlife trail. There was something out here actually walking through the cord grass. I don't see an animal, just the path that it uses to travel from its resting spot here near the land and then it goes out to the water. If I had to guess, I'd say it was a raccoon. They're very commonly seen out here in Apollo Beach. This is a crowned conch. You can see they will, it's another kind of marine snail that likes to live and feed up on the mud. And you can even maybe see in the background some of the trails other snails have made in the mud around that conch. And these are a yummy prey item for those blue crabs. So this was our day in the salt marsh. I hope that you enjoyed it. As you can see, these salt marsh habitats are quite alive with life. And three things I hope that you can remember about the importance of salt marshes 
are that one, they are the base of the food chain, the food web here in these habitats. They provide a lot of shelter for the animals that live here. And I mentioned that they are nursery habitats. About 90% of the Florida seafood that you eat, whether it was fish, shrimp, crabs, oysters, they need these marsh habitats and the wetland habitats as their nursery areas. And finally, they're actually really important for us. So a tropical storm turned into Hurricane Sally, and later on this afternoon when it's high tide, where I'm standing, the grasses are going to be underwater because these salt marsh areas protect us from storms by absorbing all that extra water so that our homes and the areas around us don't flood. So I hope that someday you'll get a chance to explore your day in the salt marsh. Thanks for tuning in.